Welcome back to a very wet, windy and wild Phillip Island Raceway. Completion of Heat 1 and the positions remain the same. Dominance by the Mobile Holden Racing Team. I know you won, Mark, but boy, that looks slippery out there. That was pretty wild, Mark, I can tell you. The first lap, because what you're, you're a pioneer on the first lap, you just don't know how slippery it is. And obviously Craig found how slippery it was at Lukey Heights. And, uh, I mean, I was almost with him. I mean, I thought he was going in the bank. And I was about a nanosecond behind him. And, uh, I mean, it was one of those races. It's, it's very good. It's great fun to drive like that. But uh, after it gets a little groove, a little dry line, if you get off the dry line, you're whacked. You're in a lot of trouble. What about the traffic? Was it OK out there? Traffic was fine. It was no problem at all. I mean, really, we just got to the middle of the race and it started to dry up, and I just looked after the tyre a bit. It was sort of the smart thing to do. Congratulations. Best of luck in heat two. Thanks, mate. From Scaife to Seatsaw before we went to the break, we'll explain why in a minute. Scaife Lowndes, Ingle Seaton, Faulkner, Radisich, Richards and Tanda. John Bow, Steve Reed, John Bow's got bent steering for this race. Dick Johnson, Paul Romano, Greg Murphy, Jason Bright, Tony Longhurst and Rodney Forbes, the privateer. Donaher and Tratt, 17-18, Parsons Wheel, a good showing in the new AU there for the youngster. Nash and Mazzides, Russell and Gary Baxter. Steve Ellery and Mike Emery, Gary Wilmington, I don't think he's on the grid at the moment. Cameron McLean, he's going to start from pit lane. He's got problems with his rear brakes. Neil Crompton, he's had his car repaired, so he'll take the grid. Bob Thorne, John Briggs and Mark Larkham right back there on row 16. This race will be interesting. The uh, track has dried out. Now, to explain what's happened with the results, there was a red flag put out when the Dougal McDougal incident happened, so positions went back to lap 11, and that is why this guy, Russell Ingle, finished third, despite running off the track a in the actual race proper. A red flag went out after the checker flag. After the Dougal McDougal incident, yeah. It doesn't make a lot of sense, really, to me. Well, the word is that the whole field hadn't crossed the finish line, and that's why the red flag went out. So positions went back. We get set for race two of three, round four of the Shell Championship Series. The Mobile One car is very well placed. Radisic was a big mover in the last race. We'll see what the Shell Helix car can do. Away we go. It was a big mover in the middle. That was John Bow in the catboard. He got away to a great start as they all cleanly away as they tear down on a mixed surface. Some dry, some still wet. Let's hope they all get through OK as the two Mobile One cars. No doubt about that. Yeah, well, I hope they got some sort of agreement there. Oh, Radisic right out of the wet. Scaife leads him through. A great start there off pole position. His teammate Craig Lowndes locks in. And John Faulkner, once again, a sensational start. The better electrical car. He'll hound those two as they come through the southern loop down toward turn three. Great start for the better electrical Commodore driver. Jason Bright working his way up from 14th. Yeah, he can really come unstuck trying to make up some places in this because basically you see the dry line there and then you sort of nip up the inside and you make a great name for yourself. We're all hanging out there on that dry line. No brave person except for Bright. He's the first yeah, one to come on the wet going. on the inside of Steve Reed. So the Pertec driver ducking up the inside there. He now chases Tony Longhurst as they cruise around into Siberia. The sun is out here at Phillip Island. Up the hill out of Siberia heading toward the hay shed. That really fast left-right combination. We're on board with Glenn Seaton as he follows the pack. Just feeling his way through right up on the ripple strips there. You can see how busily he's working away at the wheel. Shifts it back as he points it up over Lukey Heights for the first time. And look at how busy yeah, he is at the controls. Don't want to get off that dry line. So Seaton sitting back there in fourth position. Getting a feel for the circuit. He's got Garth Tander right behind him. Russell Engel. John Bow coming with some bent steering in the Cat Racing Falcon. Stephen Ellery, too, is on the yeah. way back. Well, Mark Scaife has never won a round here at Phillip Island in the V8, so this could be his day. Craig Lowndes, our series leader, is tucked nicely into second spot, and it was pretty much, in, well, we shouldn't say effortless because they were driving and driving very hard out there in the first race, but this race is a little more comfortable for them at the moment with the dry line. We should point out, too, you saw that spectacular vision as we came back from the break of Dougal McDougal's accident. Dougal did climb out of the car, he's OK, but he's been taken to the hospital to be kept under a few hours of observation. He put a crack in his helmet, it really shook him up, so they just want to make sure he's OK before he's released. And a very busy couple of weeks coming up for the Perkins Engineering with both Larry's car and Dougal McDougal's car, which comes out of the Moravan factory. Completely crunched this weekend, so Larry will be joining us in a few moments' time. We'll talk to him about that. John Faulkner has been the surprise today. We shouldn't say surprise, but he's been very consistent in the better electrical VT, doing extremely well. Behind him, Glenn Seaton looking for an opportunity, and Garth Tander has driven very sensibly today. Oh, looking for an opportunity. He really nailed John Faulkner coming out of Honda Corner. Very neat move up the inside by Glenn Seaton, so he takes third position. Faulkner's back to fourth. Tander, Radisic, Ingle, Bow, Johnson and Murphy. All right. 
right, we've got some uh, competition updates to talk about. The major winner for the Shell Helix competition, Russell Harris. Congratulations on Bill oh. Thomas Faulkner gets right out of shape. You'll be heading to the Northern Territory for that Barramundi fishing trip and to spend some time with Dick Johnson to go to his uh, VIP testimonial dinner and hang out at Hidden Valley. Now, our second winner of the Ultimate XR8 competition, the $200 Ford Tickford Pack is Don Bilton of Penrith in New South Wales. You're the second winner in that competition. Congratulations. As Seaton has bridged a little bit of a gap, or rather spread out, got a gap on Faulkner. Here's the replay of the earlier incident. Uh, yeah, he's just running a bit wide, Faulkner, and uh, given Glenn a real good chance to get a good run out of it, and he did. So I noticed that uh, Radishin uh, seems to be holding Ingler. Yeah, well, Glenn Seaton now up in third position. He says he just doesn't have the speed to match these mobile Holden Racing Team Commodores at the moment. They are trying to sort out the suspension on this car. It's the first time he's ever raced it in wet conditions. Now he's back on a dry line. He feels he's going to be able to just tune this car into better race trim as the day progresses, but he's still got no answer for those mobile Commodores at the moment. 1.3 seconds the lead. Escape and Mounts have over Glenn Seaton, the first lap, first flying lap around. To that in a moment. Here's Stephen Ellery and Dave Parsons. Ellery uh, coming out of MG. Whoop, just got oh, oh and how did he there. keep it off the wall? Yes. So what started to be a good day for Steve Ellery hasn't turned out so well in the, only his second drive in the 99 season in the Shell Series. That's a classic of just getting out on the wet bit and booting it. So Murphy up to 10th place. That's nice to see the Murphy. Greg Greg and so too does Garth Tander, who started the day 18th. Tander in the Valvoline Cummins Commodore sits fifth as we join Mark Larkham in the Mitre 10 Ford. This is the battle just outside. Oh, way back. This is 21st position, Larkham. Dicing Ray back there outside the top 20. At the moment, so he's got a lot of work to do. Not Mark Noski, the Holden Young Lions driver, just ahead of him, and that's Darcy Russell in the Playboy car. Noski has had a very... Oh. Forbes, the two privateers. Donahue quick here, qualifying during the week. But, uh, he's blotting his copybook coming out of MG turn. He's going to drop a lot of positions there too, and hopefully he won't get clouded before he gets it back on the black stuff. So he's OK. Let's have a look at that on the Shell Helix replay. Oh, it's just uh, Forbes. He was trying to go up the inside there, the looks of it, and uh, just gave him a little bit of a tap. Well, Rodney's been able to escape. Meanwhile, uh, McDonough has got some work to do. Whoa. Oh, Cameron McLean is off. Well, he was, yeah, he was complaining about having no rear brakes. That's why he started from the pit lane. Maybe that's bitten uh, him hard. Just trying to see where that exactly is. Well, the gap up front is closed up for sure. Lowndes is putting the pressure on his teammate, Mark Scaife. And we're just through that uh, McLean incident was at Siberia, where the Mobile One cars are coming into now. The Holden Racing Team duo. Yeah, Gretsch is going to be on the radio saying, and now, boys, there's still... <laughs> yeah, well, Lowndes has put in a much quicker one that time around, a 139.73. Let's go for 140.4, so Lowndes has turned up the wick a bit. Behind his teammates, gave the winner of Heat 1, Lowndes. Maybe looking for a victory in Heat 2. But Seaton still has no answer. 3.9 seconds, they've doubled the gap over the FTR Falcon in that second lap, so they are demolishing this field once again. Let's see if Seaton can hang on. Crompton from the back of the pack, speaking of FTR, Crompton from the back of the pack up into 24, so he's gradually making his way through, but a hard day's work for him. The top ten sits like this. Scaife, Lounge, Seaton, Faulkner, Tander, Fifth, Radisic, Ingle, Bow, Dick Johnson in ninth in his farewell drive in the island, and Greg Murphy working his way into the top ten. Well, conditions obviously getting a lot better. A 139 for Lounge. Scaife's fastest lap in that first heat was a 144, so they found about four or five seconds in pace. The track really drying out. It'll be better for Glenn Seaton, I guess. For John Faulkner back in fourth position. Garth Tander in fifth position is remaining pretty static. Radisic, though, has taken Garth Tander. The Shell Ford driver's on the way up. He's up to fifth. Tander back to sixth. Ingle in seventh. Have a look at Glenn Seaton's last lap. A 137.47. Oh, there you go. Whoa. He is right on it now. So Seaton on his favourite circuit. There's no question about that. He's it's... pulled the gap down too, Lee. 2.6 seconds. It was over three seconds. So Seaton oh, now really getting a move. Glenn's record here at Phillip Island is remarkable. Nobody has won more races here than Glenn Seaton, and he has been Ford's flagship, that's for sure. Have a look Radisic, at this Radisic, look, he's flying. Radisic, Tander, no, Ingles right in there. Ingle. <laughs> oh, this could be interesting. Russell and Garth Tander together. Oh, yes. 
through Siberia. We sit with, with the Castrol SLX yes. car. <laughs> he's going to become very busy. Russell <laughs> Eagle, pumped for a big result of Philip Island. He loves this place and his points scores. Sitting back there in fourth, it's actually been a remarkable performance so far, considering he's been struggling with the car in those early rounds. Look at him right up behind Garth Tander. He's got John Bow filling his mirrors, a fantastic quartet. Paul Radisic bouncing up from 19th fastest in qualifying. Now he's finding himself battling in the top five. Tremendous effort from the 36-year-old Kiwi, but look at the amount of pressure here. John Bow giving Russell Engel a bit of a nudge. Engel repeating the favour for Tander. Tremendous battle. Shell Helix Privateer scoreboard at the bottom there, and it's Steve Reid in the Lansvale PPG car. Still the quickest. Look at Russell, hard at work. Put one foot wrong, and there's going to be someone there to take your spot. Tander will be watching the mirrors for Engel. Likewise, Radisic for Tander and Bow hang with this group and Seaton's continuing his march toward the front we thought he wasn't a match for the mobile cars 1.4 seconds now Seaton's really chomping into their race they look how close Russell Engel is as they sweep through this corner 200 kilometers an hour really leaning on the Cummins Valvoline Commodore would you like to be in Tanda's shoes now <laughs> or Seaton's <laughs> oh, oh, on this circuit, the Honda hairpin. And Greg Murphy has come right up onto the back of the cat board. So Murphy, his day improves. A bit of a mystery with his teammate Steve Richards. He's disappeared from the top ten, but Greg's there in the second of the wins cars. Well, that's a good time from Russell Engel. He's running in the 37s with the mobile cars, but Seaton is the fastest man on the track by far. 136.43 for the FTR Falcon. He's flying. Darcy Russell's car just off to the side. Your Shell Helix update for you. There it is. Fourth to maintaining fourth. Engel is up into six. We've seen that move. And John Bow back there in eighth position. Longhurst in 11th behind Murphy. And Bright has worked his way up into 13th. More right after this. to Phillip Island, you're watching race two of three, and it is still the Mobile One HRT cars, but Glenn Seaton.